Hello, kia ora, namaste. Hello, my name is Moise and I'm from Faro. Hello, my name is Megan from class Faro. And I will be doing the karakia. Manoa mai te mauri nuku, manoa mai te mauri rangi, ko te mauri kai o, e mauri te pua, ka pakaru mai te pau, hauie huie tārikie. Today is fifth, Friday, 5th of November 2021. In Māori, that's Rāmere Rima, Firangi Arangi. Today is Tristy's birthday. Have a lovely day and have lots of fun. Today is the 5th of November, which is the day we remember Parihaka. It is time for the last part of our learning about Parihaka. Te fiti orongo, orongo mai and tu, tuhu kakahi were men who wanted fi to find peaceful ways to solve the land disputes in Taranaki and live happily alongside their neighbors. Now they are remembered for their belief of rejecting violence even when they were protesting against injustice. So what do white feathers have to do with Parihaka? The Ra Kuru, the white albatross feather, is a sign of peace and pride. Let this be clearly understood by all Māoris, Pehiki, and all other nations. The white feather is a sign of that all nations through the world will be one black red and all others that that are who are called human beings this feather will be a sign of unity prosperity peace and goodwill today's story is read by fine michelle and the story is the fish of maui bye and have a good weekend arahoi held Maui and he floated on the sea and the clouds kept the sun from his eyes. The Fish of Maui Maui had magical powers and was much better at everything than his four brothers. Roto, Mua, Pai and Taha they planned to go fishing the next day, but had not told Maui, as they were jealous and they did not want him to come. Early the next morning, Maui hid himself in the bottom of his brother's canoe. His brothers laughed as they set off, little knowing that Maui Nukuro the trickster was going with them. There he is, children, look. He's a real tricky one, all right. They paddled out beyond the breakers until they found a good place to fish. But it was not good enough for Maui. Atamai, the quick-witted, he sprang from his hiding place in the bottom of the canoe. Look at the brothers' faces, children. They were so surprised. The brother, brothers, still shocked by Maui's magical appearance, obeyed his order to paddle on. On and on they paddled. They begged Maui to stop, but he would not. As the sun began to set, the land was already out of sight. All that night, Maui paddled by the light of Marama, the moon. One by one, his brothers fell asleep. The sea miles slipped beneath the keel of the canoe as something drove Maui on and on. Morning found the, bro the brothers grumpy and surly. Maui was at last satisfied with the fishing place, but as Utu, or revenge, his brothers would give him no bait. So, he struck himself in the nose, 
and smeared the magic jawbone hook with his own blood. Around and around his head he whirled the jawbone of his ancestor. Out and up it crept in a wielding, widening spiral like a great carving in the air. Then he flung it free to plummet like Takawao, the shag, into the ocean. The line plunged through the depths with the speed of a tyre. The bone struck wood and locked in the arm of a carving. Maui, on the other end of the line, did not know that his hook was sneered on the tickle tickle of a fare, rooted deep in the back of a giant being. He was not landing a fish, but fishing a land. He tugged. He wrenched. He heaved. He strained with every muscle in his body. At the bottom of the ocean, something began to stir. Above, Maui chanted a karakia, which is a magical incantation, that passed down the line and into the great fish. Can you see the fish at the bottom, children? See his two eyes, one there and one there. They called on it to rise up, to become light and float to the surface. But it knew the sea was its home, and it began to fight. Maui braced himself as the sea began to churn and boil. Planting his feet firmly astride the canoe, he started to pull in the line. He ter his terrified brothers made no move to help him, and they clung to the bucking craft. Look at their eyes, like two kind of children. Mmm, scared. The fish threshed in fury, but his strength was not as strong as Maui's will. Power coursed through Maui, and the great fish ballooned to the surface. And what a fish it was! His tail stretched away to the north, and his head lay far in the south. I must get my hook, said Maui. Do not touch him while I am gone. He is smooth and flat, and I do not want him damaged. He's talking to his brothers. Do you think they're going to listen to Maui? Let's see. <gasps> but... The moment Maui was out of sight, his brothers began to hack out their share. For after all, hadn't they helped with the paddling? The great fish writhed in agony as the paddle blades sliced into its flesh. Oh, where? Oh, where? Where? In no time, his once smooth back was a jagged mess of valleys and ranges. The fish of Maui was now a rugged land. See all the mountains, children, all the maunga, some pointy ones and some round-topped ones. You may have visited Te Ika a Maui, or even be living on his back at this very moment. For he is the North Island of New Zealand. Doesn't it look like a rather battered stingray? And children, we here in Tamaki Makoto, where we live, is around about the base of the stingray's tail, around here.
And that is the story of the fish of Maui.